So hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first uh, session of Bitwarden Brilliance. Today, we're going to be doing a dry run. The purpose of these sessions are more technical dives into Bitwarden and all the things that we can do to help increase your security. Uh, today, we'll be going over SSO and just why you should be configuring SSO to help increase your organization's security. So we're going to go over a brief overview of Bitwarden, but since we're all Bitwarden all-stars here, I think we could put a pin in that for today. We're going to do a brief overview of SSO, some SSO workflows, go over some IDPs that we support, of course, configuring SSO, what that login process would look like, self-onboarding for a new user with SSO, and of course, we'll hook you up with some additional resources. So. Putting that pin in this overview of Bitwarden since we're all all stars with the product here on the Bitwarden team. So a brief overview of SSO. It's a flexible solution that lets that can fit your enterprise's needs. And you can configure SSO with SAML 2.0 or OpenID Connect, also known as OIDC. And these are just configuration options that work with a wide variety of identity providers. So for our purpose today, we're going to be using Jump Cloud as our identity provider. Feel free to follow along if you'd like. I'm gonna go over the enterprise policy that relates to configuring SSO. We have some uh, decryption options for accessing safe workflows. That is gonna be encompassing key connector. That's gonna be a session for another time. Today, we're just gonna be focusing on the core concepts of configuring SSO, just-in-time end user onboarding, which is signing up a user with SSO and some other benefits. So here you can see what our SSO workflow looks like. And to really concise this down, SSO is just authenticating it against an identity provider to really sit, uh, prove who you say you are to ensure that you should be able to log in to access all of your most sacred and secure credentials. We do support, as you can see, a wide variety of SSO identity providers here from Active Directory, Ping Federate, Google, Duo, as well as some OpenID identity providers as well. As stated, we're gonna be focusing on Jump Cloud for configuring SSO today. So we might as well go ahead and get started. But the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and sign into a Bitwarden account that we're gonna configure SSO for. Go ahead and log in, head over to the organization. It's a brand new organization. I'm gonna go ahead and go over to single sign-on. Now from here, we're gonna have to go over to Jump Cloud. So I'm gonna split my windows and let me know in the chat if everything is still sized accordingly. So we'll sign into Jump Cloud as our administrator. Go on over to SSO and we're gonna go hit this plus icon and create a new SSO instance. You can see I have a few test instances here as well. Good news is Bitwarden does have a pre-configured uh, setup here for Jump Cloud, so it really just handles a lot of the identifiers that you would have to carry over manually. We're gonna give it a display label and we're just gonna call it Bitwarden Brilliance Test. I'm just gonna go for five. Go over to SSO. And now we're gonna to need to have our IDP entity ID. This should be a value that you set yourself. So we'll just call it Jump Cloud uh, Red Test 3. We're gonna need our SP identity entity ID. Now for cloud hosted customers, it's always going to be this here, https slash sso.bitwarden.com slash saml2 slash, and then we're gonna need our ACS URL. And now this is gonna, be generally this same format here, but it's going to need your org ID. So from the Bitwarden configuration side, we're just going to go ahead and copy that ACS URL on over here. Now that we have those two set up, we're going to want to enter in a new IDP URL here. So we'll just call it Bitwarden and we'll keep that same naming convention. We'll call it Jump Cloud Red Test 3. And then uh, you can, of course, add in these different attributes if you'd so choose to, but we're not going to need to configure that for today. Identity management, we don't really need to touch anything here, but what we are going to need to do is go on over here to user groups. 
and make sure we apply this group of users to uh, have access for SSO provisioning and authentication. We're gonna go ahead and confirm this, and this should generate a, a uh, certificate. We'll go ahead and download that. Now, you can see I have it up here in a text file. What we're gonna wanna do next is go ahead and copy this certificate value. Now that we have that in our clipboard, we're gonna head down here to the X509 public cert and just copy that on over here. So the next step in this process here is we are gonna need to uh, go ahead and carry over some attributes from this SSO configuration to our Bitwarden configuration. And the attributes that we're gonna need here are such as the IDP entity ID. And we're just gonna go ahead and put that in the entity ID field here on our Bitwarden configuration. And then we're also gonna need the single, uh, single sign-on service URL, which is th this IDP URL here. Go ahead and copy that on into here. So now we've gone through, we've applied all of our attributes into their respective fields in the Bitwarden integration. So we'll just go ahead, save that on Jump Cloud. Shouldn't really need to use Jump Cloud again until we're signing into SSO. I'll go ahead and save my configurations on the Bitwarden side. Now what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna go over here to settings. And you're just gonna give this an identifier. And this identifier is gonna be used to kick off that handshake to your IDP provider. And you'll see what that looks like in just a few moments. And lastly, we're gonna come up here to settings. We're gonna go over to organizations and we're gonna come here to this gear cog. And I've already linked SSO, but if you haven't done that yet, you would just wanna click link SSO. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open up an incognito session for our vault, just to make sure our cache isn't uh, playing any malintent with us. We're gonna enter in that organization identifier and apologies if I didn't call this out. We're gonna wanna click this enterprise single sign-on button. We're gonna enter that uh, organization identifier that we had entered previously. Now from here, we're gonna just click login and you'll see we're brought to Jump Cloud to go ahead and authenticate with them. So I will, Go ahead and copy in my username and password. That's kicking off the SSO handshake. And now lastly, I just need to enter in my master password for this vault item here. The reason that you have to still use your master password is as stated at the beginning of this demo, SSO with Bitwarden is really just an additional authentication step. Your master password is still holding the final phases of your encryption decryption process. So we're gonna wanna make sure we enter in that password here. So let me go ahead and bring that in. Now you can see I've successfully signed in with SSO, completed the handshake, and I'm free to use my vault as I please. So before we go over any just-in-time provisioning, I just wanna make sure everybody feels confident with uh, how this SSO configuration looks, if there's any questions on workflows or anything of the like. Good question, Ryan. If you mess up the configuration, not to worry, admins and owners get to bypass SSO and multi-factor authentication by default. So you can always get back into your vault to make any changes as needed and get things properly configured. However, if SSO isn't a required policy, and I'm glad you mentioned that because it's a, it'll be a good thing to touch on here, that wouldn't be an, an effective issue anyways. So on the policy side of, thing, of things, we're gonna wanna make sure that we cover this. So you would just come in here to manage, go to policies, and then we have our single sign-on authentication policy. And before we enable that, we have to enable single organization, which would restrict users from joining any other organization. Then we would be free to enable single sign-on authentication. 
And when this policy is enabled, all users who are not owners and admins have to sign in with SSO to reach their vault. Any uh, further questions at this time? Looks like Russell had one. Sorry about that. Uh, do you do you only have to enter the identifier on the first login? Good question, Russell. You'll actually have to enter that identifier on each subsequent login. But if you uh, look here, if I go to Enterprise Single Sign-On and I have this BW123, we can actually add that into our URL here. So that way it can be pre-provisioned. So that way your end users wouldn't have to worry about entering, that entering in that organization identifier as long as they reach the subsequent correct URL. Absolutely, Russell. So I guess if there's uh, no further questions, it might be good to go ahead and open up another incognito window here just so our cache doesn't affect anything. And I'm gonna go ahead, enter that organization identifier, and I'm gonna provision a new account with SSO. So oh, looks like we're still hitting some cache stuff. So give me one second to clear this out. session. All right. Oh, I'm going to go ahead, go to SSO, enter in that identifier. Now we're brought to our Jump Cloud login screen. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my new account here. into that. Now it's going to go ahead and ask me for my master password again. So I will go ahead and enter that. Now I have signed up for another Bitwarden account. Uh, looks like, oh, apologies. I actually signed into the same demo account. Sorry about that. Let me go ahead and do that again. Apologies, I just made these test accounts, so I wasn't sure of the naming conventions I set forth. Head to Enterprise Single Sign-On again, enter in that identifier. And now let me go ahead and bring in this account. Hit the SSO login. Now, as you can see here, it's asking me to go ahead and create a new master password for this account. So I'm going to go ahead and make a nice strong password. I want me to retype that and I can give it a hint if I would like to, as we all know. Go ahead and submit. I know I have a weak master password. Don't yell at me. But as you can see here, I've now just created a new Bitwarden account with uh, onboarding with SSO takes less than a minute to get that all set up. Now, you will notice I'm not a part of an organization yet, and that's because we're going to need to have that owner sign in and confirm me. So in my other window here, I can go ahead and see that in the Manage pane, I have a new user who's been onboarded. They're accepted. So as per our, uh, our workflow, before you hand over the keys to your most secure passwords, we want to make sure that you're cognizant of every user that you're onboarding. So in this case, I know that this user is a part of my team. I know that they had signed on with SSO and we can go ahead and take that for, uh, take that out of the event logs here. This test user had logged in with SSO for the first time.